One of the beauties of Japanese movie is embracing the ma. If you don't know what ma is, you can say it is the art of silence. More embracing the silence and the daily life of characters. In this movement, you can say the character does nothing or just do the simple thing that they have been doing in their daily life. Studio Ghibli movies are the perfect example of this and you can see this kind of things a lot in other Japanese movie also. But what will happen when you break that rule? First, you might fail hard. Second, you might create something awesome that people will appreciate it. The crazy transition, fast and unique montages, vibrant color, a lot of time lapse, and a fast paced story that is made for the modern audience. There's an attention span of goldfish, which is just 90 minutes because if it is longer than that, the modern audience will be bored. This movie is that that has broken the rule of Japanese cinema that is known for the ma. Pompo is a talented film producer in the movie called Nala Wood. Despite her prowess to see through the potential of actors and staff bring out their talent to the fullest, she has only been producing B-class action and erotic films. But this movie is not about her, but her assistant Jin, who is a shy introvert outcast with nowhere to go who used movie to escape his reality like me. One day, Pompo asks this director to let assistant Jin did it the tailor for the movie they were making. Character of this movie, Pompo, Hirao so Jin obsessive nature towards movie and how knowledgeable he is when it's come to creating movie through a very stylish visual which is just a peak of the ice rock. After that, Pompo gives Jin the tax of directing a film based on the script written by her with the most famous actor and with a sexy lady. Look at her. Don't you think she is sexy? Pompo agrees with me. But she is not the lead. She is the heroine of the movie Jin Edith the Taylor. But this cutie is who is a newbie to the film industry. If I have to say about the story of the movie, it is pretty good. It is not out of ordinary. The director was able to tell the message clearly and every scene feel like it lasts for just the right amount of time. But what makes this movie amazing is the style and cinematography and why I think it gets the rating of 8.15 in my anime list. At the beginning of the movie, the director Hirao foreshadowed the character and their situation of them and what they will face in the final part of the movie. Due to the great filmmaking from the director Hirao, for example, establishing shots that are wide and very late, the wall of Nala Wood seems very much alive, plus with the vibrant color and the transition damn they were fancy as hell but i love it do you know which is the best transition of this movie this is yeah whose idea is to match got of pinching the belly and the design of the character they are simple but that's kind of help the studio to make these characters flow smoothly and how can i forget about the montages progression of the new heroine was so intelligent on how to tell a story with visuals only and the perfect example of don't tell if you can so is this movie philosophy is all about that and if there is an anime that makes boring stuff like editing interesting which is boring as hell let me tell you especially editing voice cover and filling them with clips these sorts are like the gene the main character is fighting with the main boss in the dungeon it has the intention of that and kind of reminds me of dead note potato chip part i mean the filmmaking side of the show is what defines the greatness of the show i want to talk about the ending of the movie so we can go more depth on the gene the main character after they shoot the movie and enter the editing phase he was dissatisfied with the result it is good but not enough he feels something is missing something he did not realize until now just like i was saved by the movie i want my movie to see and able to save someone. The director Hirao can finish the movie before this like in the manga where the Jin does not put his own idea but with the final arc it was worth it. This is the time where he add his own stuff and kind of force Pom Pom to reunite the crew to shoot the additional footage which caused the massive controversy in Nala Wood. It is the obstacle for the final arc but you will not find this arc in the manga. In the final arc it is was when you see Jin as a director who owned the script from the writer Pom Pom and make it his own where he does not want to leave it all on the floor and has no regrets. The author has done an amazing job of creating the backstory of Jin. Even though he is shown as a someone who has a lot of film knowledge, he is not a genius who has developed his eyes and imagination overnight. But watching tons of movies during his teenage years and studying the film as an assistant of Pompo. And let's not forget these side characters. Even it is just a 90 minute movie, the director and the author, both of them was able to develop them so that they will be interesting as alone. If you want to read more about the story, like the new movie Jin Road, you can check the manga. I mean, like, there is a lot of stuff, they can make a two movie out of it.
Takayuki Hirao, who has worked on Go Editors being a mixer of 3D art, Mazo Kono Sima, uh, Gyo the Garden of the Sinner, and Storyboard of Attack on Titan. There is not a lot of information about him in the internet, but watching his past work, especially Mazo Kono Sima, where he started to create the style in the Pom Pom movie, especially the color, which I love about both movies. I was really impressed by how he and the studio were able to create the top notch animation of Ou Simai in 2013, even getting a 7.5 rating in my anime list. And talking about another anime movie, Gyo, Tokyo Fish Attack, I don't like it as much as the other one. I only watch it for around 15 minutes, so I will recommend you to watch Mazoko Ou Simai along with Pompo. I mean, like finishing a movie at a time when you can just watch another movie, since it is a good one. About the studio that produced Pompo is produced by Clap, Pompo being the most popular anime. I mean, Studio Clap has only produced 5 anime, so there is not very much to talk about. I highly recommend you to watch Pompo when it goes out of typical Japanese cinema road and I think that you should support it. Nowadays, I'm kinda into filmmaking stuff and try to go on dev of movie and anime that I watch, even try to study how the author shared the panel in the manga, so, so watching something related to filmmaking was amazing.